Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Hi, boys and girls. You know, I was working out in my garden the other day, and I got to thinking how wonderful loving care is. Now, you take flowers, trees, and bushes, for instance. If you give them lots of attention, why, they'll grow and bloom to your heart's delight. But if you don't pull the weeds and fertilize and water them, they'll do very little in the way of rewarding you with their beauty and growth. And animals are the same way. If you love them, they can sense your fondness, and they'll respond to your delight. But there are some folks who can't care for anything, I guess. That's about where we should begin our story today. We'll call this one A Dog's Worst Enemy. Our story opens with three events that exploded the anger of the good citizens of Naughty Pine into a raging fire. It all began a few weeks ago on a Tuesday morning. Here, Pancho. Here, Pancho. Come here, boy. Pancho, where are you? Pancho. Oh, you poor thing. You're sick. Marty. Marty. Here, there is. What do you want? Come quickly, Pancho. Sick. Look at the poor dog. He's so sick. Here, help me carry him into the house. Don't move him, Madge. He's been poisoned. <gasps> no. Oh, who would do? I don't know who the rat is. But I'm going to call the vet right away and have him put Poncho out of his misery. Poor guy. What are we going to tell little Marty? I don't know. What do you say to a boy when you tell him someone poisoned his dog? <laughs> You better come quickly. What's the matter, Mrs. Kurtz? Your dog, Apache, is on my front porch and he's sicker than... Well, he's sicker than any dog should be. Come on. Oh, no. We're too late. Yes. Yes, we're too late. He was such a wonderful dog. I'm so sorry, Bob. What do you suppose killed him? It looks like... Poison. Somebody poisoned Apache. How terrible. The man that did this ought to be horsewhipped. Oh, that'd be too good for him. Apache and I hunted together for ten years. We were real pals. A little more, Ernie. How's that, Chief? Oh, fine. Right on the button. What happened to Brownie? Oh, I don't know, Ernie. It's been a long time since he didn't go out on the fire with us. Yeah, and how? Since he was a pop. Well, there he is over in the corner. Hey, there's something wrong with him. Yeah. Well, I'll say something's wrong with him. Looks like he's dead. Hey, let me see. You're right. He's dead in a doornail. Poisoned. Poisoned? As sure as I'm a foot high. Look at those stains inside his mouth. I'd sure like to get my hands on the low-down skunk who did this. Wait till the rest of the boys find out. They'll tear this town apart. When we find him, we'll tar and feather him and ride him out of town on a rail. <laughs> In half a day's time, the whole town was in an uproar. 
anyone who would stoop so low as to poison dogs was considered to be lower than a snake. The firemen started spreading anger from person to person, and soon the word was fanning out like wildfire. Then it was discovered that two more dogs had been poisoned that same morning. And that knowledge was like pouring gasoline on an already roaring fire. My son is brokenhearted because little Poncho's dead. They ought to send the man who did this to jail for life. Phil, I'd rather take a horse beating than tell little Marty about Poncho. If I ever get my hands on the one who did this, I'll beat him within an inch of his life. For ten years, Apache and I palled around together. I'm going to spend the next ten years finding out who did it. Chief, me and the boys have covered this town with a fine-tooth comb. And we haven't found out a thing to solve the mystery. But when we do, look out. That was the general feeling from one end of Knotty Pine to the other. Folks who had dogs guarded them closely... And folks who loved animals were up in arms. The situation was getting explosive, as Stumpy informed me, as he walked into the office shortly after noon that Tuesday. Well, the low down, miserable kind of a skunk who'd do a thing like that. Uh, take it easy, old timer. Bill, there ain't words in the dictionary to describe how I feel about them poor dogs getting poisoned. Yeah, I know. But just simmer down now. I feel just as badly as you do, but we've got work to do. Work? Well, the only work we got to do is catch the environment before this town goes hog wild. That's what I had in mind, old friend. Wouldn't take much to form a mob, and they might get the idea they should lynch somebody. <laughs> You're telling me. I just came from Main Street. Everywhere a fella looks, there's folks standing and talking and... What they're saying ain't very pretty. Yeah, I figured as much. Well, folks, what's on your mind? Bill, we want that dog poisoner caught, and right now. That's right. Yeah. You've done some wonderful things in the past, Bill, and we're asking you to perform a miracle now and catch that awful person. Well, I understand how you feel, folks. There's due process of law to consider, you know. Such as? Such as finding a suspect, then proving he's guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. We got a suspect. Yes, sir, right. we got a suspect. Who is it, Ernie? Abe Gorgon. Yes, sir, Abe. Abe. Why, you must be joshing, Ernie. What makes you suspect him? I'm not joshing, and you know it. Abe's a dog hater from way back. You sure You is. know that, too. He hates dogs. He is. Has anyone seen Abe around the places where the three dogs were found this morning? Well, do we have to see him around to be suspicious of him? No. But you've got to have reasonable grounds to suspect the man. I can't bring him in for questioning or arrest him just because he hates dogs. Why not? You ought to question everybody that hates dogs. Yeah, that's right. Uh, just a minute, folks. I love dogs just as much, if not more, than any of you. But we must be reasonable in our approach to this problem. Remember, in America, a man's innocent until proven guilty. And that means beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, You'd all better listen closely to Bill, or else you're going to get yourselves into a peck of trouble and maybe even a lawsuit. I hate an animal poisoner just as much as you do. But sitting here talking about it isn't going to apprehend the guilty party. Now, Stumpy and I'll go to work on it immediately. If you'll all go home and cool off. One thing I won't permit is mob action or violence. I'll be reasonable and go on home and let us go to work. All right, Bill. I, I can see that you're right. I... I just hope there aren't any more dogs poisoned. There better not be. And we'll take the law in our own hands. Everyone in town will back us up. Hey, sure. Sure. Well, everything seemed to be under control for the moment, anyhow. But the hate and revenge fires weren't out. They were banked and smoldering. In fact, they didn't smolder very long. It was almost supper time when the office phone rang. I got it, old-timer. 
Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. This is Abe Gorgon. You'd better get right over here, young man. There's a mob of people outside, and they're talking about coming into my house and lynching me. We're on our way, Abe. Goodbye. Let's go, Stumpy. Why? Why are you taking a shotgun, Bill? There's a mob about to storm Abe Gorgon's house. And they're talking about a necktie party. Huh? Well, that's where they're wrong. I'll take a riot gun, too, just to even up the sides. Two of us against all of them. Just about. Go in the house, Stumpy, and get Abe and take him to the office. Call in some of the off-duty rangers to help you guard him. You think you can handle this crowd by yourself, Bill? Never mind that. Get Abe and get out of here. Yes, sir, right away. We aren't afraid of you or that shotgun, Bill. That's right, Bill. That's right. You'd better use your head, Marty. That goes for the rest of you, too. This gun is automatic and it has five shells in it with a spray at 22 feet. Don't make me use it. But on the other hand, don't think I won't. We've got the evidence you were asking about right over there by that big bush. A beautiful collie, dead as a mackerel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Right now we're talking about another life, a human life. Yeah. Stumpy is bringing Abe out to the squad car and taking him to headquarters. The first man to make a move to stop him gets his legs blown off. You understand? There's the dog hater! Let's get him! Let's get him! I aim to miss the first time, Bob. The second one will be right on the target. Now, those of you who lost the three dogs this morning can stick around. The rest of you go on home right now. Come on. I believe you really would have cut me down with that shotgun, Bill. That's what I said, Bob. Yeah, and it didn't take you long to say it either. you feel now, Bill? That's a beautiful dog, huh? Was a beautiful dog. That's a rotten shame, Marty. But not grounds for mob violence. What in the name of common sense do you need to convince you that Abe's the poisoner? Proof, Bob. Positive and unquestionable proof and evidence. Well, I'm going to search Abe's house and garage and his garden shed. Have you got a search warrant? Well, no. Bill, whose side are you on? Your side and Abe's side. I'm the law, remember? Oh, I'm sorry. You've always been a square shooter. I think you'll find enough poison in Abe's garden shed to kill a hundred dogs. You mean poison for spraying and dusting garden plants? Yes. Well, we all have those kind of poisons lying around. Well, not lying around, but in our possession. That's just the point. You folks are letting your hearts run away with your brains. Your emotions run away with your common sense. Mm, you're right, Bill. If you hadn't stopped us, we, we might all be facing a murder charge right now. Yeah, that's what it would have been if the mob had killed Abe. Well, why don't you go on home now? And if there's any more of this, I'm going to start filling up the Naughty Pine Jail. On what grounds could you arrest us? Disturbing the peace? Inciting mob violence? Inciting mob violence with intent to commit murder? Is that enough? You said you were on our side. I am. That's why I'd lock you up. Hey, you old rascal, how'd you get into this mess? I didn't get into anything, Stumpy. Just because that scatterbrained mob found a dead pooch on my property, they think I killed it. Well, you should never have told anyone that you hate dogs. Now, listen, you old walrus. I carried mail for 25 years in Junction City, and every year I was bitten by dogs at least a dozen times. 
How would you feel about dogs after that? Well, I can't say as I'd feel too kindly toward them. Well, at least you're honest. But get this through your head. I never tried to kill one when I was carrying mail, and I had good reason to. So I wouldn't stoop that low now. I believe you, Abe. I don't think you would either. Well, it's about time somebody believed me. I thought this was a fine town to retire and live out my life. But I'm changing my mind awful fast. No, Abe, don't go and get all head up. Bill will have you squared away before you know it. And then the same folks who were acting mean will be real friendly. That kind of friendliness I can do without. Well, I guess I'll go now. Nope. Can't say that you can. Why not? Because Bill thinks you're in danger until this blows over. Am I under arrest? Nope. Now, now, don't talk foolishness, sonny. Well, then I can leave if I want to. No, sir. Not if you plan to live to a ripe old age. Bill ain't got the fire out yet, you know. Good morning, Abe. Yeah, and what's good about it? You rangers kept me here like a... Like a prisoner. It's for your own good. You know it. Well, I guess maybe so. You don't pay no mind to him, Sonny. He's always grouchy in the morning. Uh, sort of plagues him like the seven-year itch. <laughs> Is that right, Abe? Yeah, you'd be grouchy, too, with your legs full of dog bite scars. Well, that's true, but... You'll be home soon. Everything will be okay. Hey... What's that sweet perfume I smell? Yeah, I smell it now, too. I must be going by some woman's college. <laughs> it ain't no woman. It's me. You, Stumpy. <laughs> I think the man's gone daft in his old age, wearing perfume. It ain't perfume. It's soap. Soap? <laughs> yep. Some young feller was delivering samples of some newfangled kind of soap, uh, house to house. So I thought I'd try it out. Uh, besides, it was for free. <laughs> oh, stuffy, you take the cake. <laughs> That's ladies' skin beautifying soap. You try to get beautiful? <laughs> well, if there ain't one on me, why, well, I never read the wrapper. I thought it was soap for conditioning old leather like my hide. <laughs> I can't imagine you trying to get beautiful at your age, Stumpy. <laughs> well, here you are, Abe. Home at last. Yeah, I think I'll put up a for sale sign first thing. Now, don't go jumping off the deep end. Wait a few days. You'll feel better. I doubt it. Thanks for the ride. I thought I might have to walk. <laughs> Abe, snap out of it. Those people just made a mistake. Because they're upset over the deaths of the dogs they love. Maybe. Goodbye. Goodbye, Abe. I'm sure you'll be all right. They won't bother you again. <laughs> I hope you ain't talking through your hat, young feller. <laughs> Well, the old-timer brought up a strong point with his last remark, and I planned to cross that bridge when I came to it. Right at the moment, I was more concerned about finding out who was doing the poisoning and what kind of poison was being used. I was carefully mulling over a plan as the old-timer and I drove along. Looks like we're kind of up a tree on this thing, eh, Bill? Hey, Bill! Huh? Uh, what'd you say, Stumpy? I said... Oh, never mind. It wasn't important. Okay. Now, where are we going? Over to the ice house. Ice house? What are you going to do over there? I left the collie there last night, hoping someone would claim him by now, but so far, nobody has. Well, then, we better bury him. Not yet, old timer. I'm going to take him over to the vet. And have him run an autopsy. Hey, now, that's smart thinking. 
Then we ought to know what kind of poison was used and how. Right. What do you think, Jim? I don't know yet, Bill. I ain't a toxicologist, so I'll have to do this the hard way. How long did it take? Oh, I'd say about um, three hours. Not more than that. Mm-hmm. Well, that'll be fine. Uh, give me a complete report, will you, Jim? Sure. I'll go over this poor dog with a fine tooth comb. Good. Well, I'll see you in three hours. Okay. Oh, Bill. Yeah, Jim? If I find something I think's especially important, should I call you? I'd appreciate it. So long. Marty? Yes. Is this Bob? Yes. Now listen closely. Another dog's been found poisoned. No joking. Where? Over on the north side of town. Then Abe wasn't near the dog. Oh, yes, in a way. He's been seen over there today. That's all we need to know. What's your plan so the rangers don't find out? Now, a group of us are meeting at my place, and then we're quietly going over to Abe's house and get him. I'm with you, but no lynching. Oh, no, no, no. That's going too far. I can see that now. We plan to tar and feather Abe and run him out of town. Good. When are you leaving? As soon as you get here. I'll be at your house in 20 minutes. Goodbye. Hello? Bill? Oh, yes, ma'am. Bill, there's something going on again. Hmm? What do you mean? Marty just quietly left the house after a phone call from Bob. I think another dog's been found dead from poison. Mm. Um, Madge, how come you're tipping me off? Bill, you're right. We shouldn't take the law into our own hands. I'm afraid the men might do something they might be sorry for. Thanks, Madge. I'll move on it right away. Goodbye. Another storm brewing? Looks like it. Stop you get over to Abe's house on the double and protect that man. I'm going to the lab first, then I'll meet you at Abe's house. I'll be waiting for those fellers and give them the surprise of their lives. Go on now, I ain't done nothing. We'll teach you a lesson, you dog killer. But I tell you, I... Get the ready, boys. Let go of me. You're going to be sorry. Hold up there, you guys! Take him, man. He's alone. He won't fire. We're going to tar and feather this dog killer, and you won't stop us. Bill, you look rough. I am, Abe. Trouble's brewing again. Could be very serious. You got anything yet? Yeah, I finished sooner than I expected. And here's my complete report. Uh huh. Let's see. Well, who would have thought of this? Thanks, Jim. I got to run now. Okay, Bill. Any time I can help, let me know. You've solved the mystery. Proof positive. <laughs> We're going to tar and feather this dog killer, and you won't stop us. Take him, man. He's alone. He won't fire. Let's go. Let's get him. Come on, Tar. He means it. I sure do. That first one was in the air. Now let go of Abe Gorgon. Ah, get out of here. Thank you, Stumpy. Get out in the house, Abe. I'm going. Get him back, you guys. Here comes Bill Jefferson. You can arrest these guys, Bill. They just about had poor Abe tarred and feathered. It won't be necessary, Stumpy. The mystery is solved. Yeah. Who, d- who did it? You did. That's a lie. 
You did it too, Bob. You're crazy. The next thing you'll tell me, I poisoned my own mascot. You did just that, my friend. Uh, mister, I think you're off your rocker. I had the vet run an autopsy on the collie, and he found that the dog died from carbolic acid poison. And he found soap in the dog's stomach. Soap? Where did the dogs get soap? And how do we know all the dogs died from carbolic acid poisoning? You can have your dog's bodies tested if you wish, but I'm sure you'll find they all ate soap. But how? Why? It's my opinion that the dogs got hold of some of the free samples of soap that were passed around here this week. Now, don't blame the soap company for this. I happen to know that the soap was handed to some member of your house personally as part of the advertising project because it cost the company a lot of money to do this. And they didn't want the soap wasted. Somehow, purely by accident, the dogs got hold of the soap. It's a known fact that some dogs crave the fat in soap. And it only takes two ounces of soap to kill a large dog like a boxer. Gentlemen, Abe Gorgon didn't poison your dogs. There's, uh, there's an old saying, it's... Better to look like a fool and keep your mouth shut than to uh, open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> that fits us perfectly. My boy, Marty was all broken up over losing Pancho, but I think he'd be more broken up if he knew the way I'd been acting. Let's go in and apologize to Abe and try to make this up to him in some way if we can. Yeah, okay, idea. let's go. Well, let's go. Inside inside go. Inside. Well... Abe might not be a dog's best friend, but I know he's not his worst enemy. A lot of folks have learned a lesson. And they'll understand more about Abe's attitude when he shows them the scars on his legs from dog bites. But it's tragic that some just won't listen to reason until it's almost too late. My advice is, don't let your temper run away with you. Stop and think. Well, see you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bill! <laughs> Hey, fellas and gals, Ranger Bill again, stepping in here for less than a minute to invite all of you out there to another half hour of adventure next week at this special spot on your radio dial. We've gathered a pile of stories for you with mystery and adventure and all kinds of excitement, and we don't want you to miss a single one. So next time, call up your friends or get together with them and join all of us rangers for a session of fighting forest fires, grappling with grizzly bears, or just plain trying to help somebody out. We're sure you'll enjoy the story, and you might just learn something that'll be of real help to you in later life. So, next week, be sure to listen. <laughs>